Your Excellencies, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum. Good evening to everybody. You know, it is difficult for a 25 year politician to become a diplomat right away. It's my sixth week. And today, as we celebrate uh, Adil Fitir and uh, as we greet each one in Mubarak, I remember my first day as a city councillor in this city. One of the places I visited first was Maharlika village because I was taught by my father that the, the areas that are least uh, or are most neglected or the areas that have least uh, power is the area that we should give our utmost attention to. He said the strong can take care of themselves, but the weak need our assistance. And of course in Mindanao, um, where Islam came uh, much ahead of uh, Christianity, uh, there are different towns, cities, provinces, strongholds of our brothers and sisters Muslim there. But in Metro Manila at that time, um, already 25 years ago in 1992, there was much discrimination, there was much challenges for our brothers and sisters Muslim who moved here to Metro Manila, especially for young children who were not going to the madrasa schools but were going to regular schools and sometimes were subject to bullying or teasing by their classmates who saw them as different. So I remember distinctly that in every event that I went to in Maharlika village, they started with a reading from the Quran. And I saw that at the start of every event, there was a prayer. And I told myself, why are Christians sometimes bashful or afraid to pray in public? But our brothers and sisters Muslim, the, despite the challenges here in a predominantly Christian city and metropolis, you know, are bold about their faith and are passionate. And when I said this on stage, one of the elders of Marlika village went up to me and they told me, Sir, let me tell you a story. There was a young Muslim boy and girl from the province who came to Metro Manila and went to the mosque. And when they entered the mosque, the imam told one of the custodians, tell them to take off the shoes. So they went and said, uh, brother, sister, this is holy ground. This is a mosque. Please take off your shoes. And uh, the boy and girl from the province said, but someone might steal our shoes. So the custodian said, don't worry, there's no Christians here. No one will steal your shoes. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, I wasn't offended. Why? Because he said it in the spirit of understanding. And even the Bible itself says, there are those who, are, who call themselves Christians, but Christ will say, I do not know who you are. The Bible also talks about the Good Samaritan, wherein a Jewish, um, a Jew uh, needed help, and his friends and family passed him by, and they did not help. But the Samaritan came by and did not look at the color, did not look at the religion, did not look at the ethnic, relig uh, ethnic um, origins of the Jew, but said, you need help. We're both people, we're humans, I'm here to help you. So in the same manner, Your Excellencies, we know we live in the world that the Islamic faith um, is growing, is uh, spreading throughout uh, the world. There are many Islamic scholars, there are many individuals, outstanding individuals who are gaining recognition, but also due to extremism, there are many who associate uh, extremism with Islam. But just as in the 16th, 1700s, where there were Christian extremists or using the name of Christianity or Christ uh, for their own political gain or their own vision of Christianity, which is not taught in the Bible, there are now those who spread um, Islam, uh, what they call Islamic beliefs, but who many or the majority of our brothers and sisters believe 
are not found in the Quran. It is in that uh, respect that if there are Christians who Christ will not know, there are also Muslims who claim to be Muslims, but fellow Muslims will say, you are not a Muslim. But here in the Philippines, we strive that Muslims, Christians, nomads, we will all be one and we will be brothers and sisters. Yes, there are great challenges in Mindanao, but look throughout the Philippines. Many Muslim communities around the Philippines are not only thriving, are not only respected, are not only integrated, but have become integral parts of that city. Ladies and gentlemen, look at the Duterte government. Uh, just our, our neighbor here, the secretary who's the head of technical education, Secretary Mamujong, is here tonight, and he is a Muslim. In the city of Taguig in 2016, for the first time, we elected a councillor who is a Muslim, despite the fact that uh, Mahalita village has less than as maybe 15% of the voting power of the whole city, we finally elected a Muslim councillor. For the first time during the administration of my wife, the head of security of Tagig is a Muslim. Why did she do that? Because for so long, they were saying, magulo dyan sa Mahalika village dahil sa Muslim. They're saying that there is chaos in Tagig because of the Muslim village. But when we appointed a Muslim as the head of security, he showed us that criminality knows no religion and that it's unfair to any one group or religion to cast aspersion and cast doubt and cast uh, ill um, advice on them just because they are different or you do not accept. So ladies and gentlemen, we look forward to the resolution of the Marawi conflict. We look forward to the peace talks to the passage of the basic law that will give more autonomy to our brother and sister Muslims in Mindanao. And we look forward to the amendment of the Constitution wherein the historical injustices in Mindanao will be addressed. We have also here with us today a woman who has bravely fought for this even at the times that it was not popular in the uh, majority Christian Philippines to fight for this. So may I also pay homage and uh, thank you uh, Senator Rasul, for being a guiding light at the time that there was a lot of darkness about all of this. I cannot name each and every one. Uh, I don't know if uh, Senator Tamano's son, Adele, is here. Uh, of course, the daughter of uh, Senator uh, Rasul is one of those who have continued her fight. But let me thank you. The um, Russian ambassador is here. The Japanese ambassador is here. The uh, Chinese ambassador is here. The ambassador of EU is here. It shows our unity. I, the American ambassador would be here if not for the Fourth uh, of July reception. That is, unfortunately, we they are holding it uh, at the same time. But uh, and of course, your excellencies. I sorry, I, I did not mention uh, each and every um, the the Australian ambassador. I uh, I'm young, but my my eyesight is not that great. And of course, the. Um, ambassadors of the different Muslim countries around the world is here with us tonight. My point only is that we can be one and we have to strive to be one. And we are very proud that in this country, despite Muslim minority, Adil Fitir has finally become a holiday and has finally become a day of unity. So as you sacrifice uh, during the day, during the Ramadan, as you give up a lot of things, and we try to understand you more and be there for you. We say, the Christians say, we hope Christmas can be every day. Sana araw-araw ang Pasko. In the same manner that we hope that every day could be a deal fit here. Because on that day, we seem to understand each other much, much more than other days. So again, Eid Mubarak, and thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us here tonight.